In this example, we're going to use a Fourier transform to find the diffraction pattern from two slits. And then we're going to compare the result from a calculation where we model the two slits using a convolution of two delta functions and a single top hat function. So what we've got in this problem is we've got two slits. We assume that the slits have non-zero width and the slits are a distance d apart and each of the slits has a width of 2a like that. So if we were to plot the transmission function it would look something like the blue line here. So the light gets through the two slits there, the transmission is 1, in all the other regions the transmission is 0. So we can work out the diffraction pattern. Remember, all we have to do is take the Fourier transform of the function f of x that defines the transmission function of the slits, and then the diffraction pattern will be proportional to the square of the Fourier transform. Now, if we take the origin as the center point between the two slits, we can see that we have an even function. So we can write the Fourier transform. We're going to call this h of k because we're going to need f and g later on. Now this is a even function so we can use the cosine approach. We can say that the Fourier transform is given by 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi and then it's the integral and then we've got our function that defines the um, transmission function of the slits where the slits are transmitting we just have a value equal to 1 and then we have cos kx dx like that. Now we just need to think about the limits of the integral. We can see that the bottom of the slit is d minus a, so a plus d minus a, and the top of the slit is plus d plus a. So they can be the two limits on our integral. So we go from d minus a to d plus a. So this is a relatively easy integral. We get 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi. And then we integrate the cosine x function integrates to a sine kx. And we bring out a factor of k, which goes into the denominator. And then the limits are d minus a and d plus a like that. Then when we put in the limits, we get 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi. There's a factor of 1 over k, which we'll bring out there. And then in brackets, we get sine of d plus a k minus sine d minus a k, like that. Now, although we can leave the solution in this form, for comparison later on, we're going to have to manipulate it slightly. So we can write it as 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi times k. And what we're going to use now are the equations for sine of a sum of angles and also sine of the difference of angles. So remember that sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So the first term over here is, we can think of that as that sine of dk plus AK. So we can write that as sine dk cos AK plus cos dk sine AK. So that's the first term and then we need to subtract from that so we put minus and then we've got here sine of dk minus AK. So we can write that as it's sine of the first term, so sine d k cos a k, but then it's minus cos d k sine a k, like that. So we've now got four terms from the expansion, and what we can see is that two of the terms cancel out. This term here cancels with this term here. And we're just left with the two terms underlined in red. They're essentially the same term and they both got a plus coefficient. So we get two of those terms and our result now becomes 4 
over the square root of 2 pi times k and then we've got cos dk sine a k so I'll make that a bit clearer d k and then we've got a times k like that okay and then finally because we've got a sine a k and we've got a k in the denominator we would write this as 4 we put an a there divided by the square root of 2 pi and then we've got cos d k and then we've got sine a k all over a k like that and this is what we're going to call h k so this is the Fourier transform of the transmission function of our two slits and we just need to square this to get the diffraction pattern we won't bother squaring it because all we want to do is compare this result from what we get when we use the convolution theorem so that's our first result here what we need to do now is think about how we can model the double slits using two functions so if we go back to the question here we can see that what we can do is we take a, a single top hat function if we were to convolute this with two delta functions so the top hat function extends from minus a to plus a the two delta functions are situated at minus d and plus d remember to get the convolution we have to imagine sweeping one of the functions through the other function if we were to take the convolution of these two then we would get two top hat functions as shown in the blue box and that's equivalent to the transmission function of our double slits so what we're going to do for the second part of the question is take the Fourier transforms of these two functions separately and then combine them using the convolution theorem and what we should find is that we get the same result as we got by just taking directly the Fourier transform so we'll start by finding f of k that's the Fourier transform of the top hat function again this is an even function so we can write this as 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi the integral between 0 and a the function has a value 1 when it's non-zero and then we get cos kx dx like that and this is a, an easy function to integrate we get 2 over the square root of 2 square root of 2 pi and then the cosine function integrates up to sine kx divided by k between 0 and a and that simply gives us 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi sine k a over k and as always we'd probably write an a there and a there so that we get a nice sync function so that's the Fourier transform of f of k we now need to find the Fourier transform of g of x so g of k is equal to the Fourier transform of the two delta functions so we're going to write that as 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi it's better now to use the complex exponential form so minus infinity to plus infinity and then we have a delta function at x is equal to minus d and a delta function at x is equal to d and then as always we have our complex exponential term there to evaluate this integral we just have to remember that if we have any integral involving a delta function and another function the result is just the second function evaluated where the delta function is non-zero so this gives me 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi for the first delta function that's non-zero when x is equal to minus d so I get an exponential term evaluated when x is minus d so that just gives me e to the plus i k d and then the second delta function is non-zero when x is equal to sorry that should be x minus d that's non-zero when x is equal to d so I get plus e to the minus i k d in the, in the term there so I get the two exponential terms I can evaluate this by putting a 2 there putting a 2 outside to balance and we can see what we've got in brackets now is just a cosine function so this is equal to 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi cos k d 
And then finally, I can say that the total Fourier transform will be given by the square of the Fourier transform of the convolution. And that's equal to, from the convolution theorem, the square root of 2 pi, and then it's f of k times g of k. So I just need to now work out, well, I know what f of k is. f of k is this result here. So that's 2a divided by the square root of 2 pi, and then it's sine ka divided by ka, and then g of k is this result here. So that's 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi cos kd, like that. And we can finally do a little bit of simplification. Obviously, one of the factors of 2 pi cancels, and we're left finally with a result of 4a divided by the square root 2 pi, and then we've got cos kd sine ka over ka there. And if we compare this result to our previous result up here, we can see that we get the same result. Again, we'd have to square both of these Fourier transforms to get the actual diffraction pattern. But what we've shown is that by using the convolution theorem, this provides an alternative way to find the diffraction pattern. Now, in this case, because the original function is quite straightforward, we don't really gain anything by using the convolution theorem. But you can imagine that there are more complex problems with perhaps three, four, or more slits where the second approach using a single top hat function and then a series of delta functions can make the calculation much more easier. It's also interesting to just look at the result here. We can see that the result has two terms. And what we, if we look at the physics, the cosine term is an interference term. That's the interference between the light coming between the two slits. And then the second term is the diffraction term. Okay, so we have a result that's the product of an interference and a diffraction term.